All right, we're, we're live. Victory. All right, well, I guess we're live because Paul said we're live, everybody. So hello, everybody out there. I guess we have a, new, a few new uh, subscribers since Austin came on. We got some new okay. comments. And I heard from the uh, Burzum GameCube guy from the uh, Occult Abyss podcast, so that's pretty cool. And I think it was like the coolest dude from that uh, podcast. It's not the dude with the like high <laughs> nasally voice. <laughs> it's the guy with the man voice. I guess um, I guess I can start the show off with a uh, movie suggestion I was thinking about while I was taking a shower today. A movie <laughs> that I haven't thought about in a long time, but I remember, God, it was so good. This Fern is Gully. a, uh, say what, brother? Fern Gully. No, not Fern Gully. I don't think I've ever seen Fern Gully. <laughs> Me um, neither. This is a, a somewhat early Jackie Chan movie. It's called Project A2. Is that the one where he broke, like, his skull? I think he might have broken his skull. He he's doing all his own um, he's doing all his own stunts and things. If I remember correctly, this is sort of like a martial arts comedy slash cop movie. Yeah. It's it's it, it's one it's one of those stereotypical like oh it's a kung fu movie has bad dubbing. This does have bad dubbing, but it's very funny and all the lines are hilarious. Um, it says corrupt police officer Chun has made himself the most powerful law enforcement officer in Hong Kong by staging high-profile arrests of the criminals and mobsters with whom he's in cahoots. The British authorities know Chun is a dirty cop, but have not been able to infiltrate his inner circle. Enter fearless and incorrigible military policeman Dragon Ma Yun, Jackie Chan, who comes back to his hometown to pose as Chun's new right-hand man to take down the cops and criminals. 1987. I might have. Yep. Not sure where, you, yep. where where we can find this here. I think uh, I saw it on Netflix, but that was, oh god, that was back when they had Dead Girl on there. Two thousand, <laughs> yeah, Dead Girl. Back when they had Shrooms and Dead Girl, all those like <laughs> very strange um, horror movies. Yeah, shitty horror movies that were like. I think they had like Netflix. Dead Snow and shit. <laughs> I don't remember that one. I remember Shrooms. I think it was like. They eat these shrooms, and then they have hallucinations about killing their friends, except they weren't hallucinating. They were really killing their friends. I was just reading oh. some uh, trivia, trivia on uh, Project A2. It says, the peppers that Jackie Chan chews on and later rubs in his eyes, or rubs in the eyes of the attackers were real. The prop department were supposed to make up fake peppers, but weren't able to complete them in time for the shoot. <laughs> That's pretty huh. cool. Yeah, there's a lot. That's that's the thing too about this movie. Not only is it funny, but my God, the like, the 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 action sequences of like stunts done by these guys. It it's it's really uh, it's really cool. Keeps the of... attention. Oh. Uh oh. That's not me, is it? It's Freddy. Freddy, huh? Always Freddy with the darn microphone. Hey, let's get that fixed, huh, pal? What do you think? I think I figured it out. I think someone my, <laughs> my cell phone gets near it. No, I'm not even kidding. Like, look at this. I'm going to put my cell phone near it. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's doing something. Weird. All right. Well, we'll keep that far away. All right. I'll put my phone up here higher. Yeah, throw it out the windy. I'm not near a window. I'm at the shop. Isn't it weird to do this during the day? Like, light oh, out. Oh, when it's, when it's not dark? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it felt weird coming... Like driving over here during like you know <laughs> the sunlight. It's still dark for me. <laughs> yeah, I asked Fred earlier. I was like, "Does the time change affect him?" And apparently, it does. So I got uh, some confirmation. <laughs> yeah, time change sucks. Did we lose an hour? I, I haven't even been paying attention. <clears throat> I had to wake up we at did. four in the morning. But I, we had a okay. We had a forty-seven hour weekend. Okay. Yeah, it was a long I'm, I'm gonna weekend. sleep. I'm gonna sleep an extra minute for the next sixty days to make up for it. Thinking long term, huh? Yeah. I, I still consider this to be a part of my weekend because I took the day off. I had a swap meet oh, yesterday. I had to work. I didn't sell any of my wheels. I bought. I I told you guys I bought like seven hundred wheels. I put them out there. Some Mexican guy was about to spend a bunch of money. But uh, he had the wrong. He was gonna buy the wrong size for his car. It wouldn't have fit, and I wouldn't have felt right. I'm like, don't buy these wheels. They're not gonna fit your car. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, honest salesman. 
Sometimes you have to be. Unless it's like a five dollar item, and I was gonna people say, are like, "Will this fit?" I'm like, "I don't know, dude. You, you know, take a chance." Yeah, I was blocks. gonna say, "Have you ever <laughs> con someone over something?" No, no, no. I never, no, I never did anything like that. Just the five buck ones. Like, come on, well, dude. It's just five bucks. Well, there's, well, there's, there's things that I don't know what they are, and I just tell them like, "I don't know. I don't know what it's for. Maybe it'll fit your car." <laughs> well, it's like at a garage sale. If I'm having a garage sale, and I got a old toaster for like twenty five cents. Like, does this work? I'm like. I don't know. It's twenty five cents, dude. Just, <laughs> just give it a try. Like, just you. You can flip this for me. <laughs> <laughs> you probably get ten bucks out of that. <laughs> <laughs> right. I asked Paul Good about thing. this the other day. Fred, did, have you heard about this movie Poor Things with that uh, Emma Stone chick? I only heard about it today after I saw an article about the the Oscars. I you had not heard about, about it, it otherwise. Oh no. I, I watched it. the the first The first like forty five minutes was uh, pretty entertaining. It's like a uh, Frankenstein's monster kind of thing. It's uh, Willem Dafoe, and he always plays a weirdo in movies, anyways. So yep. he, and he has like, I guess uh, I don't, I don't want to give anything away. If I don't know, do I give anything away? I always I'm always conflicted with these kinds of topics. Uh, I'm okay with it. If you uh, don't want any spoilers, away yeah, we're gonna do the spoiler alert now. Yeah, so spoiler alert. Yeah. Look, skip five minutes. <laughs> we already know it's a Frankenstein kind of movie or something like that. But the the premise was kind of cool. I, I guess it's based off a book from 92. And uh, it's like Willem Dafoe, he plays this like surgeon who got experimented on by his father. So his face is all like stitched up. It looks his face looks like a puzzle, like just kind of put, put together. And so he finds this uh, woman who threw herself off a bridge and she was pregnant. And he, what he does, the baby was alive and the woman wasn't. And I don't know why he does this, but he takes the baby's brain and he puts it into the grown woman's head. And so she's like a baby that kind of grows up and starts uh, life Wait, as, an, as a full-grown adult woman. That bothers me on a medical level. Wasn't the body dead? What would, what would transferring the brain do? Did she? Well, I don't know. Maybe the maybe was the it, brain. I think the brain. Was it a head injury? Yeah, let's just assume that. I I don't know exactly. It's a it's a silly <laughs> movie. It's it was cool up until like yeah forty five minutes and then it starts to get like soft core porn. Okay. <laughs> but it's all right. Oh my god! It's like a two and a half hour movie. Yeah, it was pretty long. Okay. But it was entertaining, so I would suggest watching it. Yeah, maybe, but maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> That's really watch long. until you get watch it until you get bored. How about that? It's on Hulu. Yeah, fair. Ah, uh, do we have any? Uh, did we have any? Uh, fucking what do you call it? Uh, mail mail bag stuff. What did what did y'all get in the mail? I got some crap in the mail. I think I showed <clears throat> everything that I got to you guys. Uh... I didn't get mail, but I got uh, pickups. Same thing. Yeah, I got stuff uh, on the way. So on the way here. Yeah, in transit now. Yeah, only thing I picked up this weekend was the Mortis Gold CD. Besides that, everything was just delivered. I got the uh, the second Morbido Morbo Sadad uh, album, and then the Eternal album from Edge of Sanity, which I think like everybody apparently everybody hates that album. They think it's like. Um, Two all over the place. I think it's a pretty cool one. It's like an underrated Edge of Sanity album, or at least their most hated, maybe. Uh, I've never been a huge Edge of Sanity fan overall. Like, when it comes to Swedish death metal, they're one of the last ones I'll reach for. Damn. Yeah, this one okay. I feel like is the most typically melodic death metal, I guess. Yeah, it's and definitely maybe the most you'd straightforward. Like it for I that think. reason. I remember listening to it and thinking it was okay. My favorite, I think, is... Uh, shit, what's it called? The one with the blue cover. Uh, Spectral Sorrows. That's a good one. Uh, that song, <clears throat> yeah. um, what was it called? The the Mask or something? Yeah. That song was... That song was I really like cool. the... Uh, I like the... The, fir the first three are the ones I tend to go back to because they're the most straightforward, I guess. Yeah, and then there's like a Man of War cover there. There is a Man of War cover in there. 
What else did I get? Oh, I got the Dorval uh, cassette. I, yeah, I just that's bought badass. My, I just bought like a, a, a. I needed to upgrade my um, cassette shelf thing because I, I ran out of uh, the little spaces for cassettes. And it mm-hmm. takes a hundred, and I don't have a hundred cassettes, so I'm like, I'm gonna just buy some cassettes. I know. I was gonna say you're going James mode. Well, I need some cassettes to fill that shelf. So yeah, I got the Dorval Attack on Dorval. Uh, what is that? Danish Danish death metal, I think. German, isn't it? No, I believe they're Danish. I think they're Denmark. Yeah, I got that. And then um, fucking head shit records. I got the uh, a Nun Slaughter split with some band that I guess are friends with them. I'm not even sure who the hell it was. Friends. I haven't even heard it. It's just kind of a blind buy. I'm like, I, I don't have anything by Nun Slaughter, so I'll, I'll, I'll get something. Yeah. Oh, hey, the Halls of Leviathan, Carnegie, is who they did the split with. Hmm. Huh. Looks like uh, it's some Weird. death metal band. I don't know. I'll have to figure it out. I'll have to listen to it. And then I got something else. Didn't I show you guys something else that I got? Yeah, I don't you know got like that. Satan, and you got like. Uh, oh, yeah, I got the Satan cassette. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Detest. Yeah. Some more crap coming in. More expensive stuff, by the way. <laughs> Maybe by next week I'll uh, I'll have some more to share. Yeah, I'm only gonna bring up the ones I actually received. Yeah. The ones in the, the ones in the mail don't count till they get here. Yeah, the ones on the way don't count. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> what did I have this week? Uh. <laughs> so, I was at a record store and. So I already have a copy of the Thorns album from 2001. Um, but I have the Peace of the Reissue. That's like one of those stupid super jewel boxes that has the really stupid everything. Yeah. And I found uh, an original copy on Moonfog. And it's like a regular jewel case. I'm like, ah, oh, sweet. Just pick that up and I can sell the, uh, the reissue. And I get home and I remember that I'm looking at it that the reissue has bonus tracks that I want to keep. So now I've got two copies. So that happened. Um, <laughs> also, the first Ofer Mod album, TM2. And on LP, the first album from Blood, Impulse to Destroy. But it's like the reissue on FDA Records, and it's like got a super blurry cover. Damn, so it kind of looks like shit. Fix that. Yeah, how did they uh, not get the the, the high quality uh, <laughs> resolution picture? I don't know, but sounds good. But looks like crap. Uh, aside from that, there's stuff from the concert, which I guess I'll talk about when we get to that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I think we might uh, actually be there. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, who, didn't, who the hell did you see? I, I forgot. Didn't, uh, didn't Paul have? Didn't Paul have shit? Oh, did you, Paul? Did you have anything? No, it's all on the way, and we uh, just dequeued those mentions. Oh yeah. All right, <laughs> all right forget Paul then. <laughs> all, all right. right well, I guess I got my uh, my uh, all spawn CD actually, but I, I feel like oh, I the mentioned Apollo it. Spawn. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that one has Pain Garden on it. That that the. I think the the demo has like a couple songs that weren't on the album that are really cool. Yeah. Yeah, so that's their whole discography. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah. But... So yeah, tell us, Fred. What what went down this weekend? What really went down? Ah, uh, this weekend. Uh so it was a show with four bands. We had Chalice of Vomit. For thirty five bucks? Shit. <laughs> No, it was only 20 bucks. Okay. <laughs> 20 bucks Canadian, which is like $3 American. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. Zesab. Z-E-S-A-B. Um, Winter Graves. And the headliner was Nocturnal Departure. So I was familiar with Nocturnal Departure. Um, the other two bands, or the two bands that came before them um winter graves and zasab are connected in any case through some of the members um to some degree and um those i weren't as familiar with 
Uh, and the first band, Chalice of Almond, I had never heard before. Um, like they, the yeah, but it's not what you would expect. They were kind of like a death, black death, almost doom bits with a lot of like noise influence. Like there was a lot of feedback and stuff like that. Um, so like, respect for what they did. Thing. Like they they pulled it pulled off what they were doing, but it's not really my thing. So it wasn't um, wasn't really for me. No. Uh, Zasab was very Black Legion's influenced kind of black metal. Um, How do you spell Zasab? Z e s a b. You said Z that threw me off for a second. <clears throat> yeah, I'm Canadian. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, this looks cool. Yeah, it does look like uh, like Black Legion stuff. Yeah, and the uh, check out the cover to the first tape, uh, Dasso Baboon. It <laughs> actually the the second tape too. That's um, very like Akon Kitra sort of thing. It looks like that uh, that that one band that uh, what the hell were they called? Big Big Ke Big Tre, something like oh, that. Oh, Bel Belket. Uh, not Belketre. The uh, they were like a new one. I can't remember what they, they had an album oh, cover that looks exactly yeah, yeah. like this, and the the, the font Bec looks Ethnic, like that. Bekethnik Zemu? Yes, yes, that's exactly what I was thinking of. I can never remember yeah. the name. I knew it's with a B. You see the yeah, name these, these of the... Um, you see the name of the vocalist of uh, Sisab? Yes. His name is... Ooh! <laughs> Pretty sure they're uh, Native American... And like they're part of a group of bands that's all like Native American sort of thing. So, Native Americans from Winnipeg. Yeah. Oh okay. There's a lot over there. Oh. But um. What oh, else? Yeah, the then Winnipeg. Winnipeg. Winter Graves was more. More straightforward black metal. Um, broke out into like a lot of D beats here and there. So I guess there was a fair bit of punk influence in, and. Uh, same vocalist does the sab, so that was consistent. Uh, <laughs> no, they were great. Is that the sort of like black punk that's like, um, like bone all or raspberry bulbs or something? Um, no, they're a bit more, more punk than these guys. Uh, these guys were more black metal with punk influence, mm -hmm. whereas like. Ferdy Dirk and Raspberry Bulbs and Bow and All sort of thing. I'd kind of just call black punk, if anything. It wasn't like an overwhelming... Where the music is basically punk, but with a more... Um, yeah, exactly. Maybe like the simplicity or the, the, the image is more black metal, right? Yeah. So, then Nocturnal Departure, they were great. They're like a more mayhem sort of black metal. More second wave influenced and... Uh, they pull it off really well. Yeah, I'm but, looking at the themes here for uh, Winter Graves. It says the Klondike Gold Rush. So they're very, being very specific with their lyrical topics, I guess. I guess so. Wow, that is very specific. <laughs> yeah. I picked up one of their shirts. It's a really cool looking shirt. Um, what did I pick up at the show? The two albums from Nocturnal Departure. So Cathartic Black Rituals and Clandestine Theurgy. And the LP of Hell Moon's uh, newest mini album, I guess. It's from 23, I think. Harrowing Domains. Hell Moon. Uh, this, this is all stuff that I'm totally not familiar with. Winnipeg, uh, Raw Black, never. <laughs> I didn't know any of this stuff existed. Well, Hell Moon is the, I think, solo project of the singer of Nocturnal Departure. So. That's why that showed up there. So are, were all these bands from fucking Winnipeg? It seems uh, like it. I don't think Chalice of Vomit is. Um, but the other three, like I said, they're all kind of connected. So whether they all came from the same loca like physical location or not, I'm not sure. Uh -huh. But they were all definitely <clears throat> involved in each other's stuff. So. Yeah, how was the show though? Did you uh, were, were there any uh, moshers or how how does that go? Who was there? Um, 
it was a mixed crowd. Um, yeah. And it, but it wasn't a huge crowd either. It's it was fairly. Uh, I mean, the venue was fairly packed, but it was a venue about the size of my basement. So. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, it's like underground raw black stuff, so you, you can't yeah, exactly too too many people. Um, there were a lot more. You add up pins and patches, and I would have liked to see. I'm so sick of that band. <laughs> <laughs> but are, are they like are they like uh, Migwa? What the hell are they exactly? Aren't they like uh, I some sort of uh, nature type band or something? I yeah yeah I don't know. What they're like, sort of left like melodic black metal. I don't know. I've listened to them and it's just like boring as hell. At least moi are kind of interesting. Like, With Heart Towards None is a fantastic album. I like the oh, way man. that you pronounce that. Moi. Mm, I, yeah, I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like yeah. you're like, moi. Yeah, moi. Mm, mm, <laughs> they're called Wada. They didn't they do like they made some announcement on Facebook or something like a while back, saying that they couldn't play in their robes because it was too hot out and the band was like getting heat exhaustion or something. <laughs> I don't know. That it was something like right, it was something like that, and a bunch of people were just calling them like I don't know. They were just making fun of them for even bringing that up and saying it, for even making a statement. A band making a statement like that, and. Uh, I remember people saying like, "Oh, they've never recovered since they did that that uh, that statement about the, you know, the heat." Well, I mean, who does that? Oh, sorry, guy, we can't play in our robes. It's like, just it's do, like, just it, don't okay. play. do it or do it or don't. It's, it's like, like okay, just, just just play. <laughs> no uh, more like, statements. Put a put a we, shirt we're on. We're making put jeans statements, on, but not as a band. Happy. Just as a yeah, we're not we're making statements, but not as a band. Just as like um, dumb assholes. Not that I'm calling Fred a dumb asshole, and not that I'm calling you a dumb asshole. It's more of a, a a collective. It's it's an endearing thing. You understand? We're all dumb assholes at heart. Yes, yes, that's very true. That's the way I sort of see the show. <laughs> but uh, I mean, hey, people are seeming to enjoy it, and uh, we're still here. So what the hell? But yeah, no, the show was good. Like I said, Chalice of Vomit wasn't really my thing, but they did it well, so that's that was fine. Um, and then the next three bands were all fantastic. It, it was a great show. <clears throat> Paul, tell us about yeah, your, um, your show experience here. All right. So what we went to this weekend. We went to two shows this weekend. First one, one was better than the other. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, the first sounds, one was sounds better. Definitive. The first one was better. <laughs> so what we have, uh, Oxygen Destroyer. They Oxygen were on first. Oxygen Destroyer, and then we had uh, Mortis Mortis Gold, Gold playing then... uh, the Dying Remains set. That was very cool. Yeah, and then uh, some Skeletal Remains. A little bit. Of, we caught a little bit of Skeletal Remains. Uh, were Skeletal Remains opening, or? Oh, they were. They were. Uh, they were headlining. Yeah, it was their release party for some. Uh, I don't know, oh, some like EP or something. But um, yeah, but Mortis Gold sold the show. Yeah, I mean, they would have to, wouldn't they? Yeah. And, um... Yeah, yeah we got there. Um, you and Anthony had to blow up the bathroom. So, you guys... <laughs> yeah, as soon as we... Got, we were listening to... Uh, we were in the car, just, like, having a beer. And, um... Uh, we were, Paul put on fucking Last Days of Humanity. And uh, Anthony <laughs> goes... He goes, man, uh, I'm gonna be... My ass is gonna be sounding like this dude's vocals in a minute <laughs> when I get into the bathroom. <laughs> wasn't lying <laughs> wow no wow yeah yeah we both blew it up and then i think we went out to have a cigarette and we went in back into uh catch oxygen destroyer and uh yeah, we, we had to get our last our friend yeah we we drove our friend amy she came with us who is like this um mistake one she's just like a, a local girl <laughs> what'd you say paul said mistake number one mistake number one bringing amy so right when we walk in uh the the bar is like the first thing you walk in uh, right next to the door. And uh, there's like a thing of cups and a jug of water, like with a little spigot. So people, just, you know, just drink water. And it's, she goes for the cups. And this is the first thing that we that happens when we walk in the venue. She goes for the cups. All the cups fall over. And then she fucking knocks over the jug of water. Aww. And it was, it was funny. Like, I'm like, oh, Amy, knock over the cups. <laughs> 
And the the bartender saw her do this, and she she's like, "I'm watching you." And she goes, "I'm not even drunk." Well, it's like she dropped the cups, and then after she picked them up, and it took her like you know longer than you thought than you would, you know, to do that. She's a, she's a bit of a, a dunce. And then um, she so she got anywhere. so she got her water, and then she like threw it back like a like a shot or something but like missed her mouth and it was like it was like just got all on of, her shirt yeah it was like all over like her yeah her shirt and everything it was just like i was like what the fuck <laughs> he's like you're drunk and then she's like no i'm not i'm not <laughs> oh come on amy. come on amy this they, we know her sister too they're both like they they don't have uh like their motor skills aren't developed it's very strange <laughs> so yeah, yeah that yeah that his... happened and um Oxygen Destroyer, they they were pretty good. There there was like one, there was a one guy hardcore dancing by himself during was, Oxygen no. Destroyer. And then there was a oh, guy no. that was um like, like he was like at an EDM concert or something. He was like, oh yeah, there doing, was a like, guy dancing around like he was at a fucking like electro concert. Or something. Yeah, he was just it wasn't like a fist bump. It was like just like hands like flat like yeah he was kind of like going back and forth with his hands like yeah. he was dancing to ABBA or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like what the fuck. And I think he had like a little animal backpack type of thing. A yeah, like furry. a middle school, like a middle schooler. Yeah, it was weird. Very cool. But um, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, Oxygen Destroyer was pretty good. Um, they had a lot of uh, like thrash breaks and shit. That was uh, kind of not for me, but everything else sounded good. You didn't like the thrash breaks? Yeah, it's just like you can hear that anywhere else. <laughs> I, I, I suppose I feel like I don't hear thrash breaks that often maybe that's why I was enjoying it I mean I'm not a I'm not a huge Oxygen Destroyer guy I've never like sat and listened to their music but they were pretty cool to see live their drummer was uh, yeah he really was intense. he was crazy I feel like they'd be fun to see they, they were fun to see uh, like after they played their singer was just <laughs> Walking around the venue by himself the entire time, yeah, like just we, we must have we must have saw him like twenty times walk by by himself. <laughs> what the? I don't know what he was doing. Like it's like when he hits a wall, he do, he's like a Roomba. Like he just hits a yeah, wall. Yeah, Roomba. And... <laughs> you hit a wall, you go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we're just like in the cramped, uh, uh, like smoking outside hall, and yeah, uh, they, just, they they have you barricaded with those like fence things. Like right on the sidewalk, right up against the venue. So there's probably like 50 people, kind of just piled up against the wall, really. Yeah. So we <laughs> we did that like well every half hour or something. We just pop every out every half hour, get a beer, get a smoke, stand outside. Yeah. And then there's a uh, one time I think I was there first, and then you guys were grabbing beers, and mm-hmm. then there was like some uh, like Russian dude or something that was like talking through a Google Translate uh, translator, and he was like. <laughs> He's like, oh, uh, like he would speak into his phone and then pop out the other side. He'd be like, oh, uh, do you know any bars or clubs around here? And then um, I was like, uh, let me look up on my phone. And there's like one down the street. And he said, oh, I got kicked out of there because I brought my own beer in. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, you, you got to buy it there. And then um, I was like, oh, these other ones are like, you know, I'm guessing this guy is fucking walking everywhere. But, um, yeah, it's like 15 minutes away, like driving, so it's like gonna be double that <laughs> walking. So I was like, yeah, dude, you're kind of fucked. And then he's like asking about the show. He's like, oh, what are you guys here for? I was like, oh, uh, you know, a metal show. He's like, oh, like like rock, like Lincoln Park. I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? I heard Paul talking to this guy saying Lincoln Park or talking about Lincoln Park. I'm thinking like, how the fuck did you even get roped into this conversation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uh. It was a uh, weird. Try to help him out, but got nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then you got a hot dog, cheaper. Yeah, yeah, and I got mustard show. on my shirt. <laughs> but every, everybody liked my sex trash shirt. Yeah, everyone was pointing it out in the bathroom. Everyone doing the uh, coke, <laughs> just like standing there was, by like, the guys in, Like there was like guys hanging out for like an hour in the bathroom <laughs> doing coke and just like <laughs> laughing and. It was stinky in there. I don't know why they were hanging out in there. Yeah, just fecal matter and, and coke dust just inhaling that or um, snorting that. <laughs> Wait, which which sex draw shirt? Uh, the XXX one. Nice. I like it. Yeah, but um, Mortis Skull, they, they were pretty great. That, that's when everybody started moshing. Me and Paul were like, 
in between the pit and the front row. So like you know that whole front crowd like the area. barrier section. Yeah, the barrier section. And um, yeah, f- people were kind of uh, going nuts. It was like I for the first time ever at a show, I felt like the old guy. It was like wow, <laughs> I'm no longer like oh I, I'm the young guy at the show. Because I remember feeling like that forever, and then finally I'm like, man, everyone's younger than me. <laughs> That'll happen more and more. Yeah, it was like a, <laughs> yeah. a blast from the past right there, watching that set, though. it was. Uh, yeah, it really was a blast from the past. You get the whole 92 album. It was uh, it was, actually awesome. was like so fucking groovy. That was like one of the grooviest uh, fucking sets I've ever seen. And then just halfway through it, he starts like blasting like a fucking maniac. Yeah, like, out of nowhere. Yeah, like, I think he was... blast at all for like... Yeah, I think they're minutes. throwing in uh, some some shit from their new uh, their new album. So it, it was, was funny. Like, was it mostly right just when, the first album though? Yeah, it was just the, yeah. They the played album they, whole, they played the whole first album and then they played a little oh, bit of uh, some of their new songs. Yeah, like there there were some people pitting, and uh, somebody like right next to Paul, they they got their beer knocked over by some kid in a windbreaker. And we see the kid in the windbreaker go by. His entire jacket is, like, oh, covered in beer. Dude, like, yeah, he looked like he fucking got through a rainstorm or something. Yeah. He like, <laughs> yeah it was that's... funny. There were, so, there were so many people slipping and falling on the floor. Yeah, as soon as someone would take a step into the pit, they just, like, fucking banana peel it. <laughs> well, you, Fred, you know, I always joke about, like, liking trailer park white girls. Of course. One like there there was one of them there that like bumped into me during the pit and I look at Paul and I'm like, Ooh <laughs> These ain't jokes. These you're ain't joking? jokes. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, joking half, they're half this? jokes. You you make funny of um you make light of real life situations. Yeah, the truth. <laughs> yeah, the truth. <laughs> yeah, then yeah, we uh what, go outside. Um we lose track of of uh of amy i think right uh during uh skeletal remains yeah like we're we're just about ready to go because we didn't want it we didn't really care about yeah we're like uh, like, one more beer we watched like five songs from them actually we we stood around for like you know a while yeah we uh, killed that beer and then then we were outside again yeah wait yeah waiting outside go inside to look for her and waiting calling and uh, we just ended up talking to like some dudes outside, and there was like some white guy with a satanic war master shirt. And I say <laughs> white guy because like it was like one at the show. Oh, he confused you with some guy from like Long Beach yeah, or he, something. Yeah, well, what he said, he's like, Oh, I remember. He's like, I thought you were one of the older heads that used to kick it with my brother. And I'm like, oh, You look older than me, dude. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Dan's like, No, 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 I'm, I'm, the, I'm the younger head. <laughs> yeah, no, no, wait, no, I'm still young. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah the, the birthday month is really uh, it's taking its toll yeah you got uh what nine more days oh, I, I oh no you got a little more yeah yeah but um I mean, what the hell did that guy say about satanic war master you said like he's like yeah they're racist what the fuck did, what the hell did you say i forget it was it was something like he's all this he cool. said like he <laughs> said like nobody goes oh uh, yeah satanic war master they're kind of racist but He's like, I can kind of relate. <laughs> oh, <what>? oh yeah, <laughs> it was something like that. I just thought that was funny to like say to strangers. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Yeah, we end we ended up just leaving without Amy because the thing no, we was waited, closed. We waited till the end. We like, waited until the, the very end. Till the, the show ended, and we're like, I don't think she's buying merch because that's like where everyone else was, and then um. <laughs> Yeah, so then we left, and then like those guys that you were talking or that we we're all talking to, he was like, "Oh, Minusa and Knuckleheads, like he's all, he'll see you there." Yeah, see you there, dude. See you at the ska show. I guess that was uh, Echoes playing, actually. Damien's. Oh, band. it was Echoes. Oh yeah. man. Uh, yeah, was, yeah. So that was our producer playing there. <laughs> but then you have come to find out that uh, Amy went met up with the friend there, and they just left without telling us that they were gonna go to another show. So we and didn't answer her phone. Like many after many attempts yeah we could have so we, we could have left like an hour <laughs> yeah if she would have said i leave if she, if she would have said anything fucking dumbass yeah fucking dunce cap yeah that happened and then after um we're like driving back uh and we you know we're drop... home we're it's like one o'clock we're home we drop off our friend yeah and then and then i get a call i need a ride I'm like where are you she goes i'm in downtown 
I'm like, we're home already. You didn't, I told her, I'm like, you didn't answer your phone. We looked for you. We waited for you. And she goes, I should have answered my calls. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> take an, get an Uber. We're not going back over there. Yeah. She's like, are you going to come? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we, we That's waited for being dumb. That's what you get for being dumb. We literally waited until I, I would have felt bad if we would have just left and been like, oh, but we waited, you know. Waited, we looked, we called, called everything. Yeah, yeah, we went into the pit or we went into the show like maybe yeah, we, five we, like, times. We looked for looking. her like, yeah, a bunch of times. Like, we did everything we could, dumb dumb. <laughs> yeah. Amy, I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. Mm-hmm. Amy, we're all disappointed. Be better. <laughs> and next Be your time best you- self. Next time you throw a cup of water into your mouth, make sure it lands in your mouth, <laughs> not in your tits. <laughs> Dingling. Yeah, and then uh, so that was a, a good show. <laughs> Excellent. And then uh, then we saw uh, yesterday. Uh, well, we missed Hyrax. Yeah, uh, I wanted to see Hyrax. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that they were opening. Neither did I. Neither did I. But, uh, didn't even know they were going to be there. Yeah. And then, um, Prong and Prong. Voivod. So we're, we're listening to Prong on the way. We're like, uh, it kind of sounds, sounds like, like Rob like, Zombie. Yeah, it sounds like, like a weaker Rob Zombie and, uh, <laughs> like Nine Inch Nails. But, um, yeah. Like, there's, I think there was a song we were listening to and we, they played it and we're like, oh, that's the one. <laughs> That's not the one. Revenge is a best a dish, best served cold. Yeah, it? yeah, that was it. Best served cold. <laughs> <laughs> the best reaction ever, though. Oh, that's the song we heard. Yeah. <laughs> and then they yeah. covered Rush's "Working Man." Whoop de do. Yeah, but we we're like already outside of the, of the like the floor. We we're, were like on a we patio. We on the patio. It was a cool but, venue, uh, though. Yeah. Th- Fucking! They 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 even announced. They're like, "This is some real groove metal." <laughs> yeah, and oh, thanks for the heads up. And then Dan thanks, guys. Dan felt real young at this show. Oh yeah, I, I, well I made a prediction before we showed up there. I'm like, I'm who's like, gonna who's be gonna be at the Prong and Voivod show? I'm like, I'm I'm assuming there's gonna be a lot of like guys with white hair, and I'm like, there has to be at least one cyber goth there. <laughs> So so we're getting beer. Um, we're <laughs> right when at, we get there. Yeah, we're like at this uh, this bar. They're like, oh, you got to go and, you know. This go to this one. other bar. Yeah. And then, you know, to get bottles and uh, cans and stuff. So Daniel's getting them. And then out of nowhere, this like cyber goth guy, guy comes up and like. He has all, the face mask and everything. Yeah. But it's like weird because it has like holes in the mask and like, all this stuff. But um, he's got they, like. Long black and pink hair. His face is like painted. He's got the. He's like decked out. All the rings. He's totally decked out. Cyber goth. He has a Fucking trench coat. Like bad everything. boy cow. Gothic cowboy look. It's very strange. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, <laughs> like, he comes up Fields to me. Fields of Nephilim. Yeah. yeah he... Exactly. Like a Sisters of Mercy, uh, like music video kind of look. And then he comes <laughs> up to me. He's like, oh, where's the beers and fucking? <laughs> where's the beers and shit? I was like, you're you're in line. And then. He was like trying to give me like a like a you know a greeting like a handshake or something, but then it was just like fondling my hand for like a second. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> and then, um, yeah, then he ends up complimenting Dan's shirt, so he got two in a row. Yeah, oh, I had yeah. the si- I had the Psy Hangman's Him T-shirt on this time. Yeah, he loved that. He's like, "Best shirt at the show, man." And then he's like telling uh-huh. me about like Mirai playing keyboards on in Necrophagia or something. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, I don't know that that guy was just he was like, I'm 60. I'm like, you're 60. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like by the way he was dressed, I was like, are you here for prong? He's all no. He's all he's all high rex and voivod. I was like, oh okay. <laughs> Six year old cyber goth. Yeah, that's why I was surprised. I'm like, you're 60 and you're dressing like this at a thrash show. He's or like whatever kind of show this is. Yeah, it's like not even cyber at that point. It's like dial up goth. I love goth. <laughs> but um, yeah. And then we're just like, well, when you walk into the show, first thing you see is a guy standing behind a wheelchair. So I was like, what? Oh, my God. oh yeah, there was a wheelchair guy there. 
And then, uh, yeah, then we just get in there. It's just, you know, dad metal. And um, you, you just felt the the bass and the, the, the kick drum just, like, vibrating the floor. I thought we were going to fall through. And then everyone on top of that is, like, stomping on the floor. <laughs> um, Bunch of old guys with glasses, like, stomping on the floor to prong. <laughs> Yeah, singing along. They get they're doing like the dad photo where it's like there were straight up prong fans there. Yeah, and they look like exactly what you would expect them to look like. I mean, good for them, but um, <laughs> good we, for we, them dads. We tried it out, and then we you know we had it we had enough. We've had enough. And Voivod then, was 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 pretty cool. Yeah, then Voivod. Oh, and then we we're just up upstairs in the patio. There's like uh, some Bosch paintings all around, and then um, we're just hearing this like song go on forever, just looping. Like they didn't play any songs in between band setting up. It yeah, was just... in between Prong and Voivod, it was this one instrumental track over and over and over again. And it was like it a sounded, it was like a it climatic like death build, or something. Yeah, it was like a climatic build up, and then it would just like go back into the same thing. It was, it was... like a climatic a climactic build up, then an outro, like the drum. And then it would start again and keep doing that over and over again. Yeah. It was like a it was like a drunk loop nightmare, dude. <laughs> yeah, and then uh And then Anthony's buddy told us that Snake was dead. Yeah, we had to look it up and be like I'm like, no he's not. I would have heard about that. Snake didn't fucking die. <laughs> and sure enough, Snake was there and he rose from the grave. <laughs> he's all oh, Blackie, Blackie. <laughs> no, what it was Piggy. He was thinking Piggy. of Piggy. Piggy's one that died. <laughs> God, fucking guy. Come on, he, had a, he almost gave us a little heart attack. Yeah, <laughs> they pl- they they played they played some of their old stuff like the the Gallows and they played um, uh, Nuclear War and of course at the end they played Voivod. But besides Voivod, they didn't play any of my personal bangers, which was a little bit disappointing. But you know it is what it is. I yelled out Tornado. He's like, we got some good stuff coming up. At least they played some of their old stuff. I mean, they have to. What do they expect? You know, what do you expect of the, of the fans to want? Did yeah. they play Fuck Off and Die? I love that song. No. No, they didn't. They oh. didn't play anything off Roar. Roar's my favorite. I think Killing Technology might be my favorite, but they didn't play anything off of it. I, I don't think. I think the second song they did was... It, maybe. Yeah, m- Maybe. It would make again. It was. It wasn't one of my uh, personal it, favorites. I think we were upstairs still while they were playing all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got there like a song or two late. Yeah, but like, yeah, just looking at them on stage, they look like Simpsons characters, like Sideshow Bob and shit. <laughs> <laughs> all their hair, <laughs> and then everyone in the crowd had that same hair. <laughs> but um, yeah, like right, right before we, uh, like parked. There, I guess there was a rocket launch last night, and I saw the rocket, <laughs> and I'm like, "What the fuck is that?" I'm like, "Oh, it's it's Voivod. They forgot something. <laughs> Get it forgotten in space." <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Boo! Asshole! Don't Down tomatoes. in front. Get on with it, douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> That's the joke. <sighs> yeah, pretty pretty eventful weekend, and I'm tired now. Oh, and then we got a brutal death metal show this Friday. Uh oh. But uh oh, I'll be resting up till then. Yeah, there me too. Go. After this episode, I'm going into hibernation. <laughs> me too. God, I have to. I have to finish writing those fucking lyrics. I hate writing lyrics. Me too. I have to me? write a story. Damn it! Do, you, you, you didn't do you start yet, them? did you? No. <laughs> Procrastinators. Yeah, I know. It's. Yeah, well, all right, well, I'll work on it this week, okay? Me too. To everybody listening. Me too. In, like, <laughs> knack, in, a week of, in a week in advance. I'll be working on the lyrics. Yeah, I'll work on it too. Knack, 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 knack. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, um, without further to do, should we get into it? Oh. Fred, did you have anything else to do? No, I'm just upset at the usage of the term to do. Further to do? Oh. I don't think further to da. It hurts me. Alright, yeah, no, I'm ready? Good. Okay. Well, fellers, 
the time has come to talk about uh, cult Greek band Unholy Archangel. What? Yeah, it's kind of crazy, right? I've liked these guys for, I don't know. I want to say not not too, too long, but long enough. I want it. When the fuck did I, I find out about it? When did I buy the CD? And why did I buy the CD? I have the, the, the demos compilation, and I'm not sure why. I'm not <laughs> sure when I discovered this band or how or why I, I like them. They're sort of a, they're sort of a real fucking racket. They're very noisy and very sloppy and very kind of confusing. And they have a strange sound for uh, for being Greek. It's it's almost like uh, the Greek equivalent of like Beherit or Blast. Probably Blasphemy and Beherit, uh, mostly to be honest. And maybe a few other things like sprinkled in there. But um, I want to hear from Paul first because I think Paul is this your um, is this your first time being introduced to this band or, or hearing about them? Yeah, first time uh, listening to this, and what, yeah, what, every... what, what's your what's your what's your thought process on um, what what this band does here? Well, the the thing is, like, you preface it with like, I don't think you're gonna like it, man. I don't think you're gonna like it. Yep. <laughs> you're not gonna like this. Yeah. And lo and behold, I like it. Wow, <laughs> you like this, but it it is quite the racket, isn't it? No, it's great. You think it's great? Yeah. Like it's <sighs> it's like good like. Like what Fred was saying uh, off air, we I was talking to him about it. I was like, oh, you know, it kind of reminds me of like Rue, uh, just vocal wise, and then uh, like Go Penis, and then you know, of course they they have like the Greek uh, Greek like um, palm muting riffs and shit in there. Sure, yeah. So like they're like it, few and far between. Yeah, I thought it was a good um, like kind of like trifane where it's like a mixture of like of certain things but then that's when i was getting into uh like oh what other bands are um you know like war metal from greece um and then that's when you guys were sputtering off about it and um yeah there's a, there's a few of them yeah because fred was telling me like oh like this is their best release because I, I haven't listened to anything else by them and uh he said like the album that he was waiting for just turned out to be like a proclamation kind of uh worship and not what they had with this release i was i was listening to a little bit of the album today it doesn't have um it's kind of missing the dynamic of like the parts that break it up uh, yeah. on this ep you know what i mean by that the parts that like aren't noisy shit yeah where it's like trying to be musical yeah well yeah, this that, isn't i, I don't even feel like this is like noisy like at all it's like you know i can hear the the riffs and the drums like perfect you know it's like it just sounds like like a rehearsal, but like you know, really good mics. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, somehow the vocals are very funny to me. Yeah, that's what they're, I was thinking of the like. Rumors they have that... they like they have no like patterns. It's just <laughs> it, like what we said about appalling spawn last week was. It sounds like he's singing with his mouth closed. This one sounds like he's singing like into a sock or a pillow or something. <laughs> he he, you know, he sounds he sounds like he's exhausted. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he does sound like he's exhausted. Look at him; he looks like he's exhausted. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, but I I thought this was good. It's like a you know really short short uh short running time, and I could you know kept me interested the whole way through, even with the little flute <laughs> intro and all that. And like the yeah, little yeah, they have like ambient uh, spoken an, word, in, like an, an interlude. There's like a side A and side B. Yeah, that's what it is. So it it was a you know good pick. I don't know uh, where I would rank it with against Trifame, but you know I probably just had to give it this more time. But I, very, I it's like, very di it's very different. Yeah. Is that the last one that I picked was Trifame? So did I do two I ugly so. black metal yep. albums in a row? Yeah, which was uglier. Oh, okay. Which is uglier? Uh, it's I'd hard. The, it's hard to say. I'd say the Trifane. The Trifane felt more schizophrenic. <laughs> this feels just retarded. Yeah, like <laughs> like totally retarded amateur. And I love, but, I love like you know, like those musical sort of parts, like you know, the palm palm muting. You uh -huh. can hear him like and, fucking and those up. Those parts are so stupid, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can hear him fucking it up, but it's like so. That's so good. I I, I like it. 
Yeah, they're a very interesting band. Um, it's like. <laughs> and the riffs are all weird. Like none of it's normal riffing. They're all very strange. Yeah, and I saw that live video. Then like this, that one song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks funny. <laughs> yeah. Like the, I think the bass player looks over at the drummer, and the drummer like nods his head yes, like yes, it's time to go fast again. They, you'll notice they do that a lot. You'll notice like yeah, moments gotta... where they don't know if it's time to go fast again, and then they just kind of go into it. Yeah, it's a lot of the drumming uh... is really not. Um, it's not keeping up. No, with... it's nice and sloppy. Yeah, but the guitars aren't really keeping up with anything either. It's like, it's like hard to tell what the pattern is to some of those parts. Yeah, and the part. vocals are not helping out either. No, no, no. <laughs> it's all very like not keeping up with anything. It's everything is on its own yeah. and not in a way that is like musically inclined. This is very not musically inclined. I I think this is guys who love metal, but. Um, it seems like they can't play very well or maybe it's hard to tell because like some of the i think it might just be the singer that's in other bands because the other members or at least this guitar player who was in this band like the whole time this is his only band and if you've heard any of their other stuff it doesn't really get like they don't change really it's pr it's pretty much the, the the whole formula you have here is their entire career basically Hmm. And I know Fred has a big uh, or a long history of, of with this band, right? Do you? I mean, that makes it sounds a lot more involved than it actually is. But uh... I mean, you played it. You played on the thing, damn. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um. <clears throat> no, I, I got the CP back when it came out, and I really liked it. And. I remember waiting for the album to come out, and the album is a bit more mundane. What did you, what did you think of this style? Were you were you just expecting kind of like Beherit blasphemy war metal, or uh, what what did you make of this? Well, I was not expecting war metal at all when I ordered it. I was expecting something like Kawir. Yeah, because it looks like that. Yeah, you exactly. Know, that's, what their, that's what their themes are. The themes are. Um, sort especially. of like Greek mythology supremacy or something like that. Yeah, and especially when you start playing the damn thing, you get the flutes, and you're like, oh yeah, this is going to be a lot like Queer. Uh, it's going to be so like much. Queer, it's going to be like Tatir, this is going to be, you know, yeah. something like that. But no, no, it wasn't. Um, but yeah, no, it's fucking great. Like, it's, it's violent, it's raw, it's unhinged, completely unhinged. And... The interludes and introduction, I guess, are they 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 shouldn't work, but they do. I don't know why. I guess it's because they really like went all in with the Greek theme. I mean, fair enough. That's they're Greek, but like it it, it works. And um, I, I think it's easily the most dynamic thing they've done because the the demos. I, I think. All of them, except for one, had a drum machine, and those sounded a bit uh, mechanical for obvious reasons. And the album kind of just sounded really monotonous, and uh, those exhausted-sounding vocals they were talking about were still sounding exhausted, but not as energetic either. So it kind of sounded like, kind of sounded like um, what's his name, uh, Legion from Marduk, where it's kind of just like repetitively grunting without much dynamism to it yeah so like looking back on it that album kind of sounds like to me a proclamation album because it's just kind of the same sort of thing all the way through whereas this wrath ep is so much more dynamic it's got more texture it's got more depth to it and it's just fucking unhinged yeah, what, before we uh, play a sample, one thing that I really like about this is that it almost presents itself as, to, to me, as like it could be presented as like a noise album or like a, like a noise band or something, or like mm. some kind of grindcore musicians or something like that. But it's like not, these guys are very much into the metal scene. 
and they were like in contact with all those guys like the guys on their thank you list they, they mentioned like go penis and um nar matter on and uh fucking winter moon and and uh, satanic war master all sorts of bands and so they're like really into this into metal but they kind of don't record their album like it's a, like a serious thing they almost just take the sonic violence and just do it even even though they may not be the best at their instruments no it really just sounds like they were hanging out at one of their houses and said hey you want to record the damn thing right now okay <laughs> and that's what came out yeah it, it, it's it's the, the the riffing is really weird on this thing we'll, we'll get into that um yeah so should we get to uh the first sample here mm-hmm. i think so i think so okay who had the first track uh fred uh, I picked. Yeah, I think you have track three, right? Yeah, Lucky the Williams War Superiority. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and listen to that. We'll be right, right back. What was that? Two riffs? Three riffs? Was that like two fucking riffs or something? Dude, what was that like? Two fucking riffs or something? Jesus Christ. Yeah, so we're back. <laughs> that sucked. Gonna yeah, have, that, that riff, I actually took uh, anti-Greek. <laughs> <laughs> Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> that one took a little longer. <laughs> yeah, my finger got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie! <laughs> yeah, that first riff I I, I mentioned I I took uh, influence for that for the first Glossy EP when I was just like, all right, I want to write sloppy war metal, and I think this is kind of um, this is like one of the perfect bands for sloppy war metal. Nice and sloppy. <laughs> I know how you kids like I'm sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great yeah, track, that, though. That's like, uh, yeah, like like I mentioned before, and then Paul just brought up again. That is kind of like a, a Norse core. This song is like the most Norse core one, if if there is one. Yeah, it's like it's yeah, like you gotta nuke. be you gotta be really proficient to be able to do that shit, especially drum wise, and like just to keep up and be on time and all that. And these guys are just doing the best they can. <laughs> so it actually kind of reminded me of the Brazilian impurity. Yeah, I, I suppose that's a, that's a that's a fair assessment too, because I mean Paul said that like 
even that beginning, boom, boom, boom. Because if, you know, I was talking about like there's breaks in these songs that kind of um, take away take away the noise and like add something musically. There really isn't one in this song. If there is, it's just that opening. Don, don, don. Wow, wow, wow. Don, don, don. Just so you know, like, oh, there's uh, there's something coming, but there's like a break where the bass and the drum kind of can uh, can do its thing real quick before you just get. Blah, 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 blah. I just like that it's uh, the lack of demonians war superiority. It it just sounds like the title. That's what you <laughs> would expect to hear. It sounds militaristic. It sounds martial. Like it's uh, it's thematically accurate for what they're trying to go for. Mm. In um in an interview with the I, I I don't know which which member of the band it was, but they're talking about uh, a few of the bands that they like like that are greek somebody like the the interviewer asked what greek bands you like der Sturmer was one of the uh was one of the mentions here and i think that this song in particular too probably is is the most similar to something on like the second der Sturmer album the uh the banner greater than death or whatever because they have a lot of these kind of um held held corded like Norse core slash war metal that aren't quite either of them. They're just sort of these like uh, fucking power chords that are making kind of illegitimate patterns or like patterns that really like it's hard to fathom why they would do a pattern like that. Don't 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 down down down. And then even on the second one, it's like wow 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 wow. <laughs> they kind of they they like they're like deliberately making it confusing, and then add in the sloppiness, and it uh, kind of brings a whole nother level of um, just like dissonance and confusion. And the riff metal. actually kind of reminds me of something from um, you remember the American band uh, Resuscitator? Uh, is that a death metal band or a black metal band? Uh, they were somewhere in the middle, but they had that I... that first album Initiation, and there's a. Uh... There's a track on there with the riffing that reminds me a lot of this particular riff, but I don't know. That's just me. My brain works in weird ways. Well, you know. Yeah, they they also <laughs> mentioned uh, they also mentioned the Greek band War Goat, who are also again very strange for uh, a, a Greek band, especially trying to do war metal. There's something very Greek about this, and there's something very Greek about War Goat and Goat Vomit. There's like there's still this like underlying um heavy metal influence that like doesn't leave or there there always has to be a certain uh catchiness at least in in a little bit of the song you know what i mean yeah i i think um what what's his name uh ryan forrester i remember reading an interview about uh the first death worship ep when it came out and uh, the, the the interview was like pointing out that um, you know when there are these just like uh, long periods of chaos kind of broken up by a catchy part, Ryan was saying um, he goes yeah well you know I'm a, I'm a heavy metal fan and heavy metal should be catchy at least you know it, somewhere in there so you, you just you kind of have to add in uh, something like that you know Beharit did it Blasphemy did it I think most of the good bands even like nuclear hammer kind of does that too a lot of the good war metal bands know where to sort of break it down and uh add in like catchy heavy metalness yeah you can definitely hear that on um i think our, our samples that we picked it's like they just like whiplash right into it too it's just like <laughs> the next thing they just go from yeah, like these jarring no, parts yeah, there's no rhyme or reason to it, or there's no like, there's no preparing for the changes that uh, that happen here. Even the changes between the 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 fast fucked up riffs, there's like no, there's no um, like there's no like count in or indication of how it's gonna play out, especially because of the drums work that the way they do as well, and then the way that the vocals work, it all just kind of like goes. Yeah, they're all like lost and they have to like look at each other to like know when the 
<laughs> when the next part comes, and it's like always giving signals. There's another band that sort of does this. Um, well, do you guys know what I mean by the faster parts here, where like the patterns really are are strange? Do you you know what I mean by that? Yeah. There's another band that uh, I recently was checking out. A band called Dis for Terror. I think they're from Brazil. Yeah, they're Brazilian. They're they're great. I wish they'd done more. Well, they had an album in 2023 that I never heard. I heard some of their other stuff, though. Oh, no way, really? Yeah, I, I haven't heard this one, though. Because I, I remember getting the uh, Impalement EP yeah, back that's, in, that's the one that Yeah, like... that's the one that I know. I have that. Uh, I, I downloaded <laughs> that, like, a long time ago. I think I got it off Bandcamp or something. Back yeah, there. and I was, I was waiting for something else and, like, just nothing. <laughs> yeah, I huh. guess they have something new. But, uh, yeah, crazy. Paul, you should check this band out, too. Dis for Terror. I think if you like... Uh, Unholy Archangel, you'll definitely like um, these dudes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that EP is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I wouldn't say it has like melodic stuff in it, and I wouldn't say that Unholy Archangel really has anything melodic in it, but um, there's there's definitely a lot of weird patterned, uh, like power chord sliding things that are kind of broken up by uh, some more catchy stuff. That, that it, felt very, uh, it felt very goat pianist to me. Yeah. Uh, Disc for Terror or, or uh, both of these no, bands here? Well, both, I guess, but yeah. I'm in, I'm in Disc for Terror specifically. Yeah, Disc for Terror for sure. Because, I mean, Go Penis, you listen to them, and I think they kind of got better at it. At mm-hmm. like, uh, they kind of got better at timing everything out and, uh, you know, knowing where things change and kind of their ability to play it but you listen to some of the early go penis stuff even like from the first album even like maybe the first two or three albums they they still have a bit of slop to them but there's something about the slop uh when it comes to war metal or goat metal whatever it's it it, it it's kind of necessary sometimes or i feel like it, it it really enhances the um just a chaotic atmosphere yeah when they're like wielding chaos and it like comes unhinged at points it's it's more charming than not like i'd rather hear that than like perfectly in time really fast war metal you know i i, I mm. like just more uh, i guess like a like a lack of a better word like more like humanist to it you know instead of yeah, being sure. more rather than totally total precision yeah like mechanized shit it's like you know there's more uh like soul to it i guess yeah i i feel like when it comes to i, I probably couldn't name one um like right off the bat, but I know there's there's a lot of war metal bands that are very precise and they're also very predictable. I feel like um, a band like Dis for Terror or Goat Penis or even Der Sturmer and Goat Vomit, all and you know all these bands that uh, we we kind of like lumped in with each other, they're all very unpredictable, really. Like you have no idea what the fuck is gonna come next, and that's something that I like about it too. <laughs> yeah, well, especially Goat Penis, they, they did start off fairly sloppy, but with biochem terrorism that kind of came into their own and for me it was uh depleted ammunition that one just caps it off for me they were yeah depleted it ammunition is def- yeah it's definitely their best we were talking and about that uh, i think a few weeks ago and it's so accurate like it's so precise but it's also so unpredictable like the the wrist that they came out with dan on it dan on it like it, it, it comes out of nowhere and just fucking great well, even something that Go Penis kind of continues to do, and I think it may be not not keeping the slop or them being actually sloppy. It's like the drumming is like too fast for normal tempo for a Go yeah. Penis, <laughs> and so yeah. the guitar has to keep up with it. And it's it's a really interesting um, sort of sound. It's like off tempo. It's like they they recorded it, but not to a metronome. For you know, yeah, just live shit. And it's like the scratch, something, something like that. Yeah, the scratch drums maybe. Yeah, and then the guitar having to keep up with the uh, ultra fast um, blast beats. Yeah, I'm trying to remember all these uh, the labyrinth of you know their song structures and shit. Yeah, Go Penis is a little bit, little bit um, labyrinthian. Unholy Archangel, on the other hand, they probably have maybe two, three. Four yeah, they're just, at, at at most. Yeah, there's, there's not a lot of them. Yeah, just playing pong with the two. Two sections of the song. <laughs> yeah, if, yeah, if if Go Penis is labyrinthine, then Unholy Archangel is a hallway. Like it's <laughs> yeah, there you go. 
uh, yeah, there's like a, there's, it's a hallway with like a piece of trash on the floor. There's like a soda can at the end of the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> there's like a few little obstacles here, but not much. <laughs> but but that's, that sounds like that sounds derogatory, but it, it's really not. Like it's just so fucking. They don't mess around. Just like it, yeah, they, they just put it all on the table and just like sort it out, and it's it's great. Because like I feel like a lot of the things we've been saying. Um, that could be mistaken as being derogatory, but no, don't don't get us wrong. We we do like this. <laughs> we think it's cool, and uh, you know the the slop and the the kind of the unpredictability and just strangeness of it. Yeah. it, it all adds and it makes it very cool. Yeah, we're the three little pigs eating up the slop. Yeah, we're piggies <laughs> eating slop, and we're rolling around in mud. <laughs> we uh, we have curly tails. <laughs> yeah, because I would I would take you know this over. You know, like like I just said, like anything that's like nice, clean, precise. Like I like this version of Norse core. If there was more of this <laughs> versus, uh, you know, what what there is. But um, like primarily, this is black metal filtered and like performed at like a war metal level. Like there isn't much like death metal or much. Like I don't think there's thrash because I, I know that's like one of the main like components to like let's say like raven darks um and then um you know go penis and shit like that yeah and even, they're, they're basically thrash bands yeah and even in a certain way yeah like even know. up to like blasphemy and shit like that like this is more like second wavy to me just like stripped of of thrash and just played at a really uh you know unique way to make it sound so savage and war metal like now that I think about it, the way you describe that as kind of being mainly just a war metal band rather than anything else, it kind of reminds me of the way that Bestial Warlust kind of constructs their songs too. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, because they're they're sort of strange and unpredictable and and almost sloppy in a way, you know, and 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 really, really quite noisy. Yeah. Yeah. And the way that this band is. Yeah. Um, there's yeah. There's like. Yeah. There's. It's like a. A lot of subgenres are just within war metal, you know. It's like the really nice, precise stuff, and then like the noisier war noise type shit, and then you get some sloppy <laughs> shit like this. That's uh... a but, but but it is quite unique. I mean, yeah. even though there there's a few bands you could compare it to, it there kind of isn't another band that sounds remotely like this. This is kind of its own entity here. Yeah, and yeah, I'm glad. I, I... I I don't think that's necessarily true to be honest. Like I hey, think cut it out, cut it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's gonna happen. No, I, I don't. I think their aesthetic and their uh, thematic Agreed. approach is unique to them for this type of music. I agree with um, us. But no, that's not gonna happen. But like <laughs> musically, I don't think they're terribly unique. I think the execution with the particular production they picked and the kind of weird approach of the vocals is maybe a bit more unique to them, but I don't think it's terribly out of the norm for this genre. I, I, I would still say that it is just because uh, the, the, the faster parts are who the fuck does anything like that? Who picks patterns like that? And then when they break it up to be like, ding, 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 ding. what war metal band would do anything close to that? Maybe like Raven know, Dark, maybe. but like they're way more uh, thrash uh, centered. Because like know, like those like those maybe parts... you see it from like Trump and Storm or something. And like yeah, those parts aren't Storm even. Is, I feel like Troop and Storm is 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 too precise to be compared to this band. No. I mean, level of precision is just. <laughs> There's a lot of sloppy bands out there too. I, I don't necessarily think these guys took a particularly unique approach to it. I think the the production on this makes it sound more unique than it actually is. But all right, that's a low blow. I mean, <laughs> I don't think I don't think it is. I still like this a lot. Like, I don't know. All I know is I wish they had done the same thing on their album. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we have uh at least we have this. At least we have Wrath. Yeah. Well, uh should we listen to the next song? That's uh going to be my pick. And I I feel like this is where 
I really got into the album. Like, all the way through, it's entertaining, but, like, this latter half with, like, the the fifth and sixth track are, like, what really kept my kept my attention to it. Um, let's see. How the fuck do you even say this? Catastrophic Wrath of uh, Cosmistus Poseidon. <laughs> Um, so yeah, yeah the, right. the fifth track, so we'll listen to that, we'll be right back. we're back yeah that one yeah yeah that's uh that's a riff on the black shepherd album knew these guys weren't original i think it might have been might have been animal i don't know but it's definitely something around the black shepherd album yeah but that first riff sounds like uh well fred said it sounded like ethereal and yeah that well that's what i wrote (laughs) it sounds nordic sounding yeah. It's kind of a strange rhythm too. It's like <clears throat> Well, they go it's, like it's, it's hyper sort of hard to tell what it's doing. Yeah, they're going too fast. It's hard to tell what they're doing, but whether you know what they're doing or not, it feels cold. Yeah, it it's sounds usually, freezing. Usually supposed to be warm over there in uh that uh The Mediterranean. Black, yeah, that a cold <laughs> a cold black metal sound, but cold as a mug. 
Isn't that weird part in the middle? <laughs> the un, yeah, the unatmospheric version of a Rodney Christ riff. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. Yeah, these guys, these guys are doing like fucking like seventeen note like ride hits and shit. It's like it's like <laughs> yeah, it's like not even a not even a full bar of that. It's just like <laughs> yeah, but, it's like a it's like a jazz beat, but like worse. Yeah. Yeah, not that bad, but still pretty bad. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, I, I like this song because it's, like, literally, what, two riffs, and then it goes into that, and then it goes back into those two riffs. <laughs> and it's just, like, yeah. long and drawn out. And, um, most, like, second wavish to me, um, like, when I was listening to it, I was telling them, I was like, I don't know how they consider this, like, like de death metal, um, you know, as well, but it's just mainly these tremolo second wave sort of riffs going on the whole time, and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, cause like that one thing that they threw in the middle, it was, you know, that it was just like rotting cries pretty much to me. Like I didn't, it didn't like feel like a thrash break or anything at all. It was just like you know throwing in that palm muted. Uh, rotting Christ riff in there and then just jump right back into <laughs> those first two riffs yeah it was like a weird approach note. but it worked I'd also like to note that uh, this band in 2000 did a split with Lust which makes sense yeah Yeah. both it bands really are does. equally <laughs> confusing sloppy fucked Confusing. Deliberately, deliberately or not, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's it. it I I could see them being on a split with lust. It has the same frantic psychosis to it that lust has. You know, it's, talking about. Uh more of the, the Greek Black Death stuff. I forgot that in that interview when they were asking about bands, they also uh, they also mentioned Embrace of Thorns. It's kind of an interesting one oh, too, yeah. right? What do, you, what do you think of Embrace of Thorns, Fred? I, I was really into them back around the time of their second album. Um, <clears throat> and I kind of dropped off from there. Um, I remember really liking the Atonement Ritual. Is that the second album? I think yeah. it's their first. Uh, no, the no, For I See Death and the Rise is the first. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, both of these are really... I remember them being really cool. I thought uh, uh, Death and the Rise was a bit uh, of a stepping stone to get to Atonement Ritual. I think that's where they really came into their sound. Yeah. And I remember liking Praying for Absolution um, as well, but then I kind of just never kept up with what they did after and there wasn't any real reason behind it other than I just moved on I guess and they've jeez they've put out a lot that I haven't heard yeah they besides, that, um, besides that we, we were talking about a few of these other bands that uh, may or may not sound like them or it's it's more like Greek um, Greek Black Death Greek War Metal what was this band that we were just talking about? Uh, Chthonium? With a C? Chthonium, yep. Chthonium, yeah. Very, very much like... Um, I would say very much like this. And also very much like fucking Beherit. Yeah, I know. They it, were it's so weird, to, deli worth, it's so it weird it. to think these bands were deliberately writing patterns that sounded like this. And then plus the guitar tone. I feel like all these elements of uh, production choice, patterns, and tone all sort of make it just like this totally haunted <laughs> not just haunted but like crazed type of music it's really cool yeah if anyone hasn't heard the Chthonian demo from 93 it's it's so worth listening to but they also have a song from a compilation called uh, Infernal's Forethought and they really beefed up the production on that one and that I think is from 94 um, and that is almost cloning Beherit. It's uh, it's a really cool track. It's worth listening to. 
Yeah, I would also recommend and, uh, uh, another band that, that we just found here. Catch Catchathon. Yeah, that was cool. That, that full EP. Yeah, it was like yeah. from twenty twenty one or something, right? Yeah, yeah, it was like pretty recent. Also, dude, uh, Paul, I don't know if you know who this is. You know who Lamegathon is? No. And Fred, you, you, I'm, I'm sure you have to know who that is, right? The, the demonic hellhounds. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that one's pretty interesting. Is, is it just me or is that one more like Celtic Frost ish, but fast? Yeah. No, I can see that. Yeah, check out Lamegathon, Paul, and look at. The- <laughs> Look at their EP for the Demonic Hellhounds. The dogs look funny. Are those... I always thought those were horses. That makes sense, though. No, they're Demonic Hellhounds. They're, they're I mean, it, it, may, it makes sense that? given the title, but... How do you spell La Megathon? Yeah. Uh, oh, L-E-M-E. L-E-M. G-E-T-H-O-N. got a cool band picture too oh, okay <laughs> see the album art yeah <laughs> looks cool huh how do you think they were horses <laughs> <laughs> i don't it's, know it's called hellhounds <laughs> but i mean like you know it's called hellhounds and if you stare at it and think about it then yeah obviously they're hellhounds but every time i glance at it I if you're not thought, thinking about horses. it they're horses yeah exactly okay. although you know what the one on the right kind of looks like a T-Rex, not going to lie. <laughs> I'm looking at uh, uh, a band called Osculum Infame from Greece. This would be the same guy from uh, La Megathon. Yep. And in 1992, uh, he has a demo called Flame of Hate, and you can barely really make out the album art, but it looks like it has a cool dragon on it, and that's um, that's appealing to me personally. I'm hoping uh, that there's something I can listen to. Yeah, no, that got reissued with the, um, with the, what's it called, uh, Chthonium stuff, so the, the entire demos should be ready, but easy to hear. It's not as, um, war metal as Chthonium, but it's, it's really good. I think of the three bands that I was involved with, Twilight is still the best one, their early stuff is just incredible, but Oscar and Fame and, uh, Chthonium were terrific as well. That's the Valley of the Burning Visions, right? Yeah. Yeah, I have to check this one out again. So there wasn't a... There, you know, you guys were talking about uh, Mexican death metal, and I, I kind of realized, like, oh, oh, I haven't really uh, delved into this stuff at all. I haven't delved into that country, but Greece was one that I delved into, so there's a mm-hmm. little bit of... Um, there's a little bit of knowledge when it comes to a lot of those bands, just because I... I for, for whatever reason, I was just so interested in the Greek sound. And all the Greek bands seem to have it, no matter um, no matter where they venture off to. Yeah. Yeah, even these fucking guys. Yeah, there's like always <laughs> inkling. There's like always inklings of it. Oh man, I'm gonna have to listen to Twilight after this. The promo yeah. tape from '94 is just incredible. I love that one. Promo tape '94. I don't know if I've heard this one, but uh, I'll check it out now. If I haven't, I don't remember. Yeah, you'll dig it. All right. The oh. album from 2000 was surprisingly good, too, even though it was a lot, a lot cleaner. Something else I was going to bring up, and for some reason, uh, I, this is something I don't think you've heard before, Fred. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. But um, the vocalist of uh, Unholy Archangel was in a band called Chaos Baphomet. You familiar with that? I, I know the name, but I haven't heard them. How did I know you you weren't familiar with them? <laughs> really? I don't know. I I, I don't know because I I know I like this album a lot and I've never really. Maybe it's just because nobody gave a fuck, and it just kind of came through a deep dive. And they, they said if you look at the uh, Chaos Baphomet band photo, the guy on the left who is uh, not not the member of Unholy Archangel, he almost looks like uh, Will Ferrell in corpse paint. Take a look at his face. <laughs> Oh, uh, I see it, and I can't unsee it. Well, it's like Will Ferrell when he's um, painted like a zombie in Step Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you just died last night. 
his, oh, his yeah, black yeah, metal but... his black metal stage name is Kill Feral. <laughs> Kill okay. <laughs> yeah, that was stupid. Um, <laughs> I was gonna I was trying to think of his name in, in Step Brothers like call me Dragon or something like that. <laughs> but yeah, Fred, uh and and Paul. Uh I think I've showed you this before, Paul. Check out the Chaos Baphomet album, The Promethean Black Flame. Yeah, yeah. It's it's quite it's it's very Greek, but at the same time it is not so Greek where it's like um, uh, what, what the hell is the name of that band it's not like Cult of Ebon where it's like oh this is a Greek band trying their very best to sound like Rod and Christ and Verathron in their most like melodic heavy metal this is sort of this is sort of like where Necromantia could have gone if they kind of incorporated more guitars into their uh, into their music it's, it's quite good stuff huh and if you if you look at if you look at the song titles and uh, things like that, it, it's quite similar to like Unholy Archangel. It's just a lot more put together. Yeah, I remember you wanted to do that one as an episode a long time ago, or from like the beginning. Yeah, I guess I've replaced that episode with this episode because now I get to bring up a, you know I bring up Chaos Baphomet. It's, I know, it's really uh, when we were listening really to good. the Unholy Archangel, one Greek band that came to mind for me was these guys didn't last too long but merciless crucifixion they have a and demo i think i think it's a demo or an album called aeresis and it's pretty uh it, it has war metal vibes um like they ended off with a sarcophago cover so that kind of tells you what you need to know yeah um, i've never but, i've never heard of this before if I, I think that anyone who enjoys Unholy Archangel will like these guys as well. Yeah, see, this is what's kind of cool about um, about about this this episode in particular. It's like, well, we've really talked. We we keep talking about Greek bands throughout the show, but this is a Greek band where there's sort of uh, another side of the Greek scene that we can dive into. That's really um, at least not as talked about, you know. Mm something that we can shine light on yeah no i mean it's it's just what the the scene was right like when you think greek black metal you think your verathrons your body in christ the necromantia that sort of Hot sound tier. nightfall exactly um <clears throat> you don't necessarily think of war metal coming out of greece just like you know norway you you picture emperor gorgoroth that sort of stuff but i mean you had bands like like suffering and fucking Einherger and all that, right? That just did completely different sounds, so. Yeah, this yeah. is, um, this, this totally, totally evil, different type of sound. And, and I, I, I urge people to, like, look into, uh, some of this vocalist, um, past bands and, like, guest, guest sessions and things like that, especially that Chaos Baphomet. Man, that's, that's terrific. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just don't think, uh, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about that band, really. <laughs> I'm going to check that out. I like the way you described it. Sounds interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, I want I want to send you guys a link to Merciless Crucifixion, but I can't find a full EP. Oh, I, just I found like something on YouTube. Tracks. I think they have. Uh, yeah, I think they just have have certain tracks. Well, either way, hopefully I can get you know a, a taste of uh, a taste of that. Let's see. Yeah, they got all the separate tracks. <laughs> oh, I found <laughs> we'll be, it's on. Uh, we'll it's on. It's on Bandcamp. I'll send you that. Oh, okay. Check out your song, Dan. Let's do it. Right, what is so. this? Release the, the Typhon? Release the Typhon. This one has a very strange um, break. It's another It's another very Greek-sounding one, but again, one that doesn't make too much sense. It's kind of just <laughs> palm-muting randomly. That's what it sounds like. Palm-muting oh. random notes, but it's cool. It's a cool idea. Just listen to it going, what? <laughs> you know what it's almost like it's almost like like the death metal band resurrection where they kind of open with uh something that's like it's it, it's you know how like nile will do things like that it's like, it's like that but way um well the way unholy archangel would do it all yeah, right fair. well we'll be right back
What an ending. Yeah, that's I just, was gonna say I'd like going, Rudy. We don't know how to end this, so let's just but I don't the bass player's like bueno 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 <laughs> <laughs> All the so like basically all the endings on this uh on this EP, it, it's like, yeah, they, they don't know how to end it. It, it. it it sounds really kind of improvised in a certain way. It's like they have a basic idea of what a riff is going to be, and they didn't practice it much, and they just recorded it. That's that's the way it sort of sounds. <laughs> yeah, no, I can see that. Yeah, and I think we were saying, like, it was like GBK... Is, or I was saying it sounded like a GBK riff, like really sped up. And then I think, Fred, you mentioned there was a moment where it like, kicked into Argus Line mode. Yeah. It was like what, around the middle? I mean, it's a short song, but. <laughs> yeah. And I, like d during one part, it was like, it did like a weird, like little syncopated part where the drums and the guitar just did like a, just like a little, like, da da. And then, <laughs> like, yeah. they, they didn't even like go back to it at all it was just like that one moment and then it was like all right next next part <laughs> it's it's like we fucked up but that's okay it's gonna stay on the recording yeah this is all uh we're <laughs> this is the best take we're gonna get <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember thinking that of like the black legion stuff but maybe it's not as prominent as it is here i remember thinking like some of vlad tepe's shit was like it, it, it felt um, like they're like, ah, fuck it. We'll just leave that in. Leaving mistakes. Yeah. In. Yeah. I was listening to um, to the uh, the split with Tar Guys today, which is, I think is just the Return of the Unweeping demo. But it was... They, they do that sort of thing when the, car, the guitarists kind of just go... Nee, nah, 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 and they're just kind of like, you know, fuck it. Just <laughs> let it go. Yeah, they, yeah, they fade it out. They so fuck yeah, is black metal. Yep. <laughs> And these guys are like, fuck it, it's it's something. <laughs> it's 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 noise, it's racket. Yeah. It's it's racket, but it's um it's it's like Greek it's a Greek heritage themed, so it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's a racket, but kinda bangs though. <laughs> yeah. On the back of the on the back of this um of this C D booklet, there's a gigantic thank you list, including like uh, Legion of Doom and Narmadron and Thornspawn and um, who else do we have here? Golrath, Impiety, Lust, Inquisition, Blasphemy, Conqueror, Denial of God, Catharsis, Black Witchery. So you got you got all the, you got all the big names. And this is this is uh, back in two thousand three. And there's a a fuck you list on the bottom. It says the big fuck you goes to Baltic Scopians. I think did they mean scorpions? Scopians. Jews, Jehovah, Christ, Turks, Albanian, Power Metal, and all the Antelians. I assume that means anti-Hellians. <laughs> they gave Power Metal the big fuck you. What What do they have against Baltac? The Baltics. No, there's a band called Baltac, the way it's spelled on there. Oh, that's a band? I thought it was like... <laughs> Baltics. No. <laughs> the fuck is Baltac? Uh, Aus an Australian black metal band from 1995. Yeah, but I think the guy is Macedonian or something. North North Macedonia. Yeah, may may maybe they didn't like him. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. They didn't like the what's that? What the hell is Scopians? Does that mean Scorpions? I have no idea what that one is. Jews, Jehovah, Christ, Turks. And Albanians. And also Power Metal. Yeah, so was Power Metal just like the punching bag of back then? Yeah, kind of. I mean, isn't it still? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I feel like there's there's been a lot of good Power Metal stuff up until like 2007. And then everything started to become like... Like a, what Ailstorm became, <laughs> kind oh, of g cheesy party metal or something. Yeah, it's and, just uh, like it's just. Dad, and I'm afraid it does suck, you know. Dad metal. But what's yeah, worse? Yeah, it is. The, what's worse? It is like, dad metal. What's worse? The 
the groove metal, dab metal, or <laughs> power metal, dab metal? Probably the uh, power metal, dad metal. But when it comes to the groove metal stuff, I'm like totally out of the loop. I don't know what's going on there. I didn't even know there was a <clears throat> fan base for prong. I, I, you know what? I take the I take the power metal or the groove. You know what? They're, now that I'm thinking about it, I would probably take the power metal too. The I, the groove bands feel like they would just be more boomer <laughs> compared to. That's that's true in ideology and in like personality. <laughs> yeah. As as opposed to like the power metal bands, maybe you could. They I feel like boomer power metal guys would pretend to know what you're into, or at least they would be interested. In uh, what you're into, yeah, or they just sense. sing about dragons. Yeah, or they just do that. Fred, how did Yo. you escape the groove metal and power metal dab metal? <laughs> oh, it's easy. I've just always had good taste. <laughs> <laughs> By the the last Dude, episode, I don't even of know this. how. I don't even know how one one goes about like being a groove metal guy well like, those guys were like growing up with that shit <laughs> probably yeah, by the age of them oh right I, I think... oh oh you mean because fred's old enough to be a groove metal guy is that what you mean no wow. talking about the guys Rude. at the concert but now that you mention it oh, I, I think, <laughs> that's, what I, that's what i thought you meant. I, I think i think it was pretty easy for me like i heard pantera i hated it and then just avoided the rest of it <laughs> yeah i guess those uh like, well, I got into I got into thrash, so like from there, I think true metal was right around the corner. Or if I was not already there, like the the real good stuff was right around the corner. If mm. that makes sense. Yeah, I guess groove metal is like a little bit more like rock adjacent. Like if you like a like a yeah, it's like it's like adjacent. It's like right around the corner from like Godsmack and Tool. Yeah. I'm alive. For you, I'm awake. I fucking hate you. <laughs> You're so I'm doing quiet. the best I ever did. I'm doing the best I did. I'm doing the best I ever did. Go away. <laughs> I like that voice. <laughs> <laughs> that was an interesting one. <laughs> I'm doing the best I ever did. I'm doing the best I ever did. <laughs> it almost sounded like Carl from... Uh, from uh, uh uh what the fuck is that movie billy bob thornton i've been talking about sling blade ain't, no, <laughs> ain't got no gas in it <laughs> <laughs> oh man i had a godsmack album once so have it uh, no that didn't last long i had a rob zombie cd once i i never got rob zombie i did like white zombie still do like white zombie but Hell Rob Zombie yeah. kind of felt like it was. I feel like Rob Zombie and White Zombie are quite similar, though. Rob Zombie felt a bit more Industrial. derivative. I don't know. It felt. No, White Zombie felt. Does not as gimmicky as Rob Zombie. Yeah, White like... Zombie just kind of felt like a, a rock band. Yeah. yeah, they just felt like they were doing what they were doing, and then Rob Zombie was. Being Rob Zombie instead of just being a band, you know. I don't know. Still had some bangers though. <clears throat> oh yeah, no, there were some good tracks in there. Hell yeah, he did. Hell yes, he did, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I remember really liking "Living Dead Girl." That was a cool track. Living Dead Girl <laughs> by the cemetery, wow. or by the <laughs> devil's hand, something like that. <laughs> I'm doing the best I ever did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I'm glad the unholy archangel. Thinking of Greek black death sort of thing. I don't know if this one will really fit in with it, but there was a really weird EP by a band called Baphomet. So Baphomet, but spelled with a T instead of a P. Um. <laughs> And ba they used to, the, the Bathomet, yeah, I guess. So, first of all, the cover is fucking great. So, one of them is lying in a coffin, and the other one is holding a pitchfork over him, and the guy in the coffin is like, bah! It's great. 
but they use a drum machine that kind of puts into overdrive so it's almost somewhere between unholy archangel and like mysticum or mm. like helheim society so it almost has industrial vibes to it but not quite and because it kind of like goes into overdrive it almost kind of pushes it into a war metal vibe even if the sound isn't specifically war metal i don't know it's a weird fucking ap but it's it's worth a listen it's it's just bizarre yeah, I don't know this one. It, it, it seems pretty cool. 1998. Yeah. It, there yeah, was um, weird. There, there was a, a circle of like Greek black metal bands that I don't think we ever touched on, and I don't exactly know how to find them. Paul, do you remember that that Greek band where like the cover was a dude meditating in the forest with antlers? That seems that vaguely, rem- um, you know, familiar, but I don't remember. Oh, 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 God, he had a really weird band name. It was called, like, Thy Lightning or something. God, what the fuck was it? I want to find out what this guy's name is, because he had, like, a grip of cool uh, black metal bands behind his name. Man, what the fuck was it? I don't remember. All right, we all have to look now. God, what the fuck? What the fuck was his name? The uh, cover you're describing doesn't ring a bell specifically, but I think it was from 1998. Uh, whatever this fucking demo was. Demo or album? It was a demo. Huh. Okay. Um, I want to. Fu- oh, speaking of speaking of this shit, uh, fucking Demiser, they were pretty cool too. <laughs> Divisor? Yeah, they were awesome. Yeah, and, and and also Demoni or uh, uh, what was the goddamn name? Fucking uh, uh, the Psychic <clears throat> Crush band and Vorfalak. They were they were cool ones too. Yeah. Medieval Demon and Nergal don't get enough love either. Oh no, th- those seem to be ones that are like uh, a little bit forgotten. Yeah. Man, I I really want to find out what the name of this this guy was. Um, what the fuck was he? You know what? I think he might have been involved in like Chaos Baphomet or something. Yeah, I would have been know what to look up. <laughs> let's yeah. see, let's see. I know, uh, he had he had this project where the demo was like lightning striking and it was a really strange band name. It was called like like Thy Mighty Thy Mighty Rule or Thy Mighty Lightning or something like that. God what the his name I'm doing the best I ever did mm. listeners drop the name in the in the comments <laughs> oh no we're staying here till we find it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I really do want to find it if we have to cut stuff out so be it but uh, I, I do want to find this should I press record or are you not recording <laughs> just kidding hold on hold on let's see let's see Mm. Oh, I, th- I found it. The band is called... Wait a minute, is this not it? Oh, I don't think this is even it. <laughs> I found a band called yeah. Druentes. But that's not it. I think uh, that's the one that, that was oh! in my head. Oh! I th- dude, I think it is Druentes. Yeah. But 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 a different... Uh... Yep, yep, this is it. It's Druentes. Yeah, Dru- that's the one I had in my Drutentus. head. Druentes. Yes. Everyone, check out Drutentus. This guy was in uh, Frost. Some sort of, like... Lyrical themes say Satanism destruction, but it's got, like, the eagle with the swastika on it. And the only material that these guys did was the split with Axis of Advance uh, in 2001. Axis of Advance, Demon Realm, and Garwall. And I remember Garwall being pretty good, too. Where are they from? Oh, what's that? Where are they from? Who, Garwal? No, Frost. Oh, Frost is from Greece, dude. Okay. It's, uh, the, the band the band with the weird name I was thinking of, it's called Dark Mighty Thought. <laughs> <laughs> sound like like a he stup- has a, a certain thought and it's dark and mighty. I was gonna say, That's sound, really cool. Sound like a stupid hoe. Yeah, no, <laughs> my, yeah, sounds like, sounds like Amy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dark Mighty Thought, The Call of Eternity. If I remember correctly, this kind of has like a little bit of Zizma vibes to it, like in an evil way, not in a rock and roll kind of way. He was in that, and he was in a band called Goat Throne, which is more, uh, I think, probably on the evil Norse chorus side, demo from 96. Hmm. Yeah, so check out Dark Mighty Thought and check out Goat Throne from 96. And also that Drew Tentis. Fred, did you know what that was? Did you see that album cover I was talking about? No, how do you spell it? Uh, D R U T E N T U S. Drew Tentis. In Frigid Silvis? Yeah, that's the one. First song is long. Uh, yeah, sure is. The second, I think, I think, second version. I think that's one of the uh, top tiers, I think. Demonium production. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and the vocalist for uh, Drutentis is uh, the dude from um, somebody from Tatir and uh, the Shadow Order and also Dark Thule. So there you go. Huh. And now I'm seeing a Greek black metal band called Kampf, but it only has a 22 review. It says fucking sucks. I have that. You have that? Is it cool? Or does it fucking suck? Uh, I haven't listened to it a long time, but I kept it, so I must have liked it to some degree. Oh, that one. I'm going to have to check out Kampf. And here it is <laughs> on YouTube. Thank goodness for the interwebs. Well, should we get into our uh, final Dark Mighty Thought? Our, our Dark Mighty Thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Who's first on the Dark Mighty Thoughts list? Fred. Before before we get to the Dark Mighty Thoughts, I'm just going to say the Greek band Vomit desperately needs to be reissued. Oh, my God. Well, that's they had two, dem probably they had two demos, too. Mechanic Abomination and Sickness is on Experiment. Uh... This shit needs to be reissued. Like, the logo is total Voivod. <laughs> oh my god! Yep. <laughs> Will this Voivod never end? <laughs> but my god, that needs a reissue so desperately. Uh, anyways, final thoughts. Uh, Paul, go. Dude. Uh. Damn, he switched the, he flipped the script on you. Paul went, Fred, <laughs> <laughs> and then Fred goes, Paul. You know, reverse me, man. <laughs> hey, don't hurt me, man. <laughs> He's doing the best he ever did. Well, you got any French fried taters in there? <laughs> you got any biscuits in there? I don't know if it was uh, out of spite for uh, Dan saying, Oh, I, I won't like this. You won't like this. You won't like this. But I actually really, really did. And just like the jarring non-transitions in between like two or three sections of songs, like keeping it really simple and playing just like black metal and performing it in like such a way to make it adjacent to war metal is really interesting. And apparently there's a plethora of, of other bands that you guys know. But this is uh, my first in this sort of uh, area. And yeah, I'm, I'm really digging it. And it's a shame that I'm probably not going to listen to the album because you guys <laughs> put put it down so, so, uh, so low. Well, listen, to the, listen to the split. No, listen to it. Listen to it. Yeah, listen to the album. It's not terrible. You no, know, it's st it's still good, but it's just not it's as not dynamic this. as the CP. Yeah, it's not this though. It's not, dude. I have but the it's... demo compilation. Listen to everything that they've done. To be honest. Yeah, what's wrong with you? It's a lot of time. No, it's not. <laughs> well, isn't isn't that what life is? Time. Yeah, time. Spend your life listening to Unholy Archangel. <laughs> there was time now. You were mad. Yeah, I had so much. There was time. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> My glasses. <laughs> you, you, you remember in Futurama where his glasses break and he's like, well, at least I can read Braille and then his hands fall off and then his like head falls off. <laughs> <laughs> That's stupid. Scary door. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is like, uh, this is what I wish Norse Core was. <laughs> <laughs> This is like a Greek goat core. 
and uh, yeah, it's, it's like it nice and sloppy and you know these guys probably just doing one take and being like, yeah, fuck it, just keep going. Yeah, it's and good. and the real eyeball signals like a third base coach signals to like <laughs> let you know when, when the next part's coming. Change, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, dude, he, look, their live video, they do the same thing. The, the bass player looks at the drummer, and the drummer nods his head like, yep, it's time to change. That's mm-hmm. exactly how they were playing. Yeah. <laughs> they don't exactly know when or what, but, you know, they, they, they kind of know. Yeah, now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. Go. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, let's go. It's like, let's start a band. It's like, okay, after first rehearsal, all right, we got a show. <laughs> <laughs> and this just proves you can do that, and you can somewhat make it work. I don't know. This might be just uh, the one in a million because it's actually really good. Uh, well, I'm really, in, I'm really interested in hearing in full their uh, 2019 split because I heard a little bit while we were um, like on break, and the, the production sounds huge. It sounds, um, it sounds like a, a, a modern metal band production now, and uh, you know, with with the type of the way that these guys play, I'm, I'm really interested in uh, seeing where that goes. Is it the same guys though? Uh, probably. It sounds like the same guys. Oh, okay. Let's see. I'm actually curious now. Let's see. Uh, the guitar player. Yep, it's the, it's the same guys. Okay, that's yeah. that's more interesting because now it's like on a, it's like a, go penis trajectory where they're like started where they were and then just got better and better. Wait, it's not 2019, dude. This came out this year. Oh, 2024? 2020, well, last year. 2023. Okay. Nice. All right, well... What was uh... I looking at before? Oh, dude, Fred, they have another fucking... They have more material after the one we were just listening to. We were listening to the 2019 one. Yeah. Isn't the other one live stuff? I don't know. I saw something, uh... Dude, I, I swear to God, I was just looking at something from like 2023. What the fuck was I just looking at? Uh, Unholy Archangel and Hammer Goat. That's the twenty. No, that's song, the one. I swear to God, I was just looking at something from from uh, from this year, and it was a different cover. Well, Fred, uh... go. <laughs> Hang on, need need to let Dan work this out. <laughs> he, he's, got here. I, I, he, he's got a I seizure. I swear to God, I no, I swear to God, I saw something that was 2023, and uh, <laughs> now I don't know where it is. Sure, some, some magical oh, release. Uh, I I see. Let's see, 2023 with Hammer Goat. But what the fuck was this 2019 one? Uh. Oh, it's the same fucking one. I don't know. Maybe it was a different version. Oh, it was Maybe the digital version. It says 2023. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, okay. So it's the same one. We have some new material though. That's the important thing. Forget the fucking. More. Forget the dates. New material. This is already five years ago. Come on, guys. That's that's new to me. Hey, if I haven't heard it, it's new to me. <laughs> I'm doing the best. Anyways. <laughs> um... <laughs> Fred's doing the best he can, damn you. Let him cook. <laughs> I'm doing the best I ever did. That's true. The best you ever did. I love that there's a review for this on Metal Archives. That's just 50%. <laughs> it's like, come on. Chariots of Hellfire. Uh, But, yeah, no, this is a... An EP that stuck with me. Like I said, I've had this for like fucking 20 years. Uh, I had a big sticker that came with it too. It has the CD face on. Anyways, I'm going off on a tangent. This is a great would EP. You, would you stick the fucking... sticker on? <clears throat> Nothing. You still have the into... sticker? Yeah, I tossed it into my uh, box full of flyers. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, at least you still have it. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. But I think, bearing in mind I haven't heard that new... Sp- you split with hammer goat uh i think this is hands down the best thing unholy archangel did it's it's such a violent recording it's a cacophony and i like that 
uh, yeah, go listen to it. And go listen to Merciless Crucifixion, because it's a fucking good demo, too. Damn, what if the hammer goat side was, like, the best thing that we've ever heard? And it's just kind of hidden here on a split with Unholy Archangel. You know, I have the Hammer Goat album. Oh, and I've Fred, also... you have it all. I also have a <laughs> He's goat. He's doing the best he ever did. <laughs> no, but I love this. I have an album from Hammer Goat, and I have an album from Goat Hammer. Like, what more could you want in metal? <laughs> Anyways, I don't know those what are my I thoughts. Want. I, want, I, want, I want good tunes. That's all I know. You want new, new material from an holy archangel? <laughs> new, new material. <laughs> well, I gotta hear the 2019 stuff first. It sounds pretty good from uh, the little bit I listened to. Yeah, me, me too. I was like pretty impressed. I didn't. I never imagined they would have a production that sounded like that. Yeah, and still sound like unholy archangel. Exactly, because yeah, skip skimming through, it sounded like them. Didn't really hear any of the break break moments. I, th you know what? Listening to the other stuff, um, on uh, like throughout this this band's discography, they don't really have those breaking moments. This just seems to be the only EP that has them, which is one of the reasons why I picked it. Yeah, and the the brief bit I heard of the split while we were chatting, it it sounds like somewhere between the Wrath EP and the Obsessed by War album. So it's still it. It took the sound of Wrath, headed a bit more in the direction of the album, but not all the way. So it's kind of like a happy medium between the two, and uh, I think it'll it's promising. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. All right, Paul, you got some thoughts? A dark, mighty thought? I already said mine. <laughs> it's your, your turn. It's true. It's your turn. Oh, damn. Then go. All right. I probably don't have too much to say about it. Um, I guess, I like, my, my main point to get across is, like, this is uh, very metal. And if you were a real one, you're, you're going to like this. And if you don't, then uh, whatever, I guess. It changed the station. Yeah. I, I, have, I have one final thing. This, is, this isn't... Uh, this isn't about the Unholy Archangel. This is sort of a uh, call to arms for our fans. <laughs> or, or listeners. Let's call them listeners. I don't like the word fans. Because that's like fanatics. Listeners. Anyone who's listening. And anyone who made it to the end of the episode. I'd like to hear your thoughts about... Um, su suggestions, really. For segments or uh, anything that you'd, you'd like to hear on the show. Any sort of changes or... You know, anything like that. Questions, comments, concerns. You know, we could do a J-Dog thing. Where he's like, got some more questions. We can do anything like that. i just like to know what, um, what, what suggestions we would have from the listeners. And also, um, what suggestions do we have from uh, you guys, if any? You two, I mean. I Q&A from the listeners would be really fun to do. Yeah, I, I think that would be fun. Yeah, we got our and, one year coming up, so. Yeah, yeah, we have to do something for the for the one year anniversary. For the people who have, you know, endured a year's worth of bullshit. Just us, us three. Well, and some Shannon. people so, apparent, apparently so, a few people really enjoy the the bullshit, and um, yeah, I mean, as far as I know, there, there's not a whole lot of uh, podcasts doing the same format if there is a form do we even have a format or are we just kind of like again dumb assholes yeah i think the latter uh, oh no well we're definitely dumb assholes but uh-huh we have a loose format you know start the episode talk random bullshit and then talk about whatever we picked to listen to and that's then a format goes, yeah and then paul goes fred go <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, no, and then at the end, Paul's like, "Guys, we gotta wrap this up. We need final thoughts." And Dan yeah, and Paul's, I are just the, like, Paul's the rapper upper guy. And then Dan and I are just like oh, off on total tangents. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, "Oh, we're not gonna leave until I find this band that I can't remember their name." <laughs> <laughs> they had a goat on the cover. Come on, you know the one. I found it. <laughs> it, didn't take, it didn't take that long. <laughs> yeah, it was like five minutes stops. Maybe even less. <laughs> no, than that. It, it wasn't even that. It, it was, was like, like three minutes. Mi it was like two minutes. Yeah, three minutes maybe. Five dollars <laughs> maybe for a hot dog. 
<laughs> yeah, Hot dog with chachos. I was going to say... Um, we need to wrap it up. Paul, go. Man, final words. RIP to uh, Rare Metal Albums on YouTube. They terminated his channel. Oh, really? Yeah. Some guy named Will William or something like that. Was it like a copyright infringement that did it in? or? Yeah, on random albums that that guy had no part of. So RIP that guy. I guess that was just his fucking enemy that was trying to take him down, maybe. Hey, I know you got this hobby. Let me ruin that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. You know how what many the hell's t- wrong with these people? This guy Who are these people? Who ripping, are these internet freaks? Ripping CDs and throwing them online for years. God damn. It's like it's been longer than a decade, I think. <laughs> this guy's been doing that. So RIP that guy, maybe he can yeah. come on. Yeah, That'd we be love cool. that guy. He uploaded <laughs> the Myths of Twilight EP. Yeah. It reminds me of the um Remember when we did the Great Sorrow episode? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got like we got copyrighted because... for um un- for uh, Underworld <laughs> is what it was <laughs> for Great Sorrow. I'm like, what? No, it wasn't for Great Sorrow. It was, it was for the outro. It was for the outro that was like Underworld. Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't Great Sorrow itself. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. No, they're so cool. Underworld. All right, isn't yeah, they're, they're they're back in my good books. Yeah, I think the only actual band that we talked about that uh, got flagged was um, Marduk when we when we oh, did yeah. the uh, 2023 retrospective. Marduk got copyright uh, claimed. Really? Not even My Dying Bride? No, no, just just Marduk. That was wow. like the only one. I know. Yeah, but I would have expected My Dying Bride. Never really thought about that. That's crazy. Huh? Now, yeah, well, we covered the first My Dying Bride. I don't think they care about that one anymore i mean they might not but i'm sure peaceful does well yeah anyways <laughs> <laughs> let's get the hell out of here let's just do like unholy archangel we don't know how to end this so we're just gonna end it <laughs>